Welcome to Morningside Uniting Church, second Lent Sunday online service. Every time we worship and praise the name of the Lord, we light this candle to acknowledge Jesus Christ, the eternal light of the world, is with us. Now let us worship God. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now let us pray. Father, by obedience, even to the point of death, your Son, our Savior, has overcome the world. Grant us His grace that we may not yield to evil, but remain steady fast in doing your good and perfect will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us sing together our opening hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Now let us sing together. We come to God knowing that we have failed to obey the call of Jesus to love God and one another with our whole being. But we come also to God who reaches out to us with healing and reconciliation. Now let us confess our sin before God and others. God of all mercy, give us grace today to make a fresh start. We know we have not loved you with our whole heart, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. As we hope to be forgiven, teach us how to forgive and lead us forward in a new life where neither grudges nor resentment have a part. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear the good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Hear then Christ's words of grace to us this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Today's Bible reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. Now let us hear the living word of the Lord. The Lord has said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord has told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lord, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we listen for the living word of the Lord, now let us pray. Since we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth, 
make us hunger for this heavenly food that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The Bible reading is from uh, chapter 12, but if you go back to chapter 11, uh, there is a very familiar name whose name was, uh, that is, which was uh, Terra. T-E-R-A-H, or Tira or Terra. Terra had uh, three sons. Abram, Nabal, and Haran. While they were living in a town called Ur of Chaldean, which is Ur Kassidim, it's a, it's a north, uh, it's west, is it west? Yeah, it's a west of uh, uh, southern Iraq nowadays. Supposedly, uh, the youngest son Haran died, leaving a son named Lot behind. So that's the relationship between uh, Abram and Lot. So his brother, supposedly uh, the youngest brother, Haran died. And so Abram, supposed to be the, uh, the oldest brother, uh, started uh, taking care of his nephew, Lot. And then after that, the whole family, except the neighbors, because Nahor got married and settled down in the Ur. And so, except the Nahor's family, the whole family moved to another town called Haran, which is near northern Syria nowadays. And a few years later, Abram's father, Terah, died there. So presumably, Abram's family, including his wife Sarah and nephew Lot, settled down well in Haran based on the size of their possessions. They acquired labors and then uh, they had many livestock and animals. So when God called him to leave behind his secured life in Haran, moved to a unknown place where God promised to take him, it was not an easy decision for him to make on behalf of everyone under his care. And the road is just like this. It's not easy road. It's not in you know, a paved. It's just like a hilly and rocky road that they had to travel. However, the Bible offers one simple sentence to summarize his decision. And the Bible says, So God told him to move and leave Haran behind and go to a place where I prepared for you. And so Abram went as the Lord had told him. Just one simple sentence proved how faithful and how obedient Abram was before God. Today's Bible reading from Genesis 12 is about how faithful and humble Abram was. It was become, uh, before he became Abraham, father of all nations. Still, back then, he was called Abram, father of a family. But the, you know, Genesis 12 is about how faithful he was. And when God called him to leave Haran, a very secured place, and move to a place unknown where God sent him. Even though he did not know where to go, even though he had many concerns to consider and resolve, he went as the Lord had told him. And as a result, he received and witnessed how God fulfilled the promises before him. Well, as a matter of fact, he did not become the wealthiest man on earth. He didn't become the strongest king of all nations, but he became the father of all nations and all believers of the world. When we think of and when we hear the promise of God and immediately we think of something bigger, something greater. But as a matter of fact, Abraham didn't become the wealthiest man on earth. He didn't become a king. But he became the father of all nations. So God's promise is beyond our imaginations and expectations. Just like Abram, each of us has our own stories of struggles and doubts, and of course, moments of happiness and satisfaction. It's a normal life we face each day, ups and downs. 
But sometimes our struggles make us doubt in God's call. So we don't follow him. And quite often, our own success and happiness keep us from listening to God's call. In Luke 14, Jesus was invited by Pharisees and lawyers to have a meal in their place. After listening to what Jesus had to say to them, one of the hosts, maybe a Pharisee, maybe a lawyer, said this, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. He must have thought that the meal Jesus was having with them was like a feast in the kingdom of God because they were the righteous ones. So Jesus gave this parable to them. A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought a five yoke of oxen. So I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. Maybe he said it because he just got married, right? <laughs> I just got married, so I can't come. Those who were invited by the master had their own excuses and also righteousness. Something more important than the invitation from the master. So they did not go. Sometimes our own struggles and our doubts stop us listening to God's call. And quite often our successes and our happiness stop us from following God. So I wonder how these people who believed in their own righteousness and authority in the community would respond when they heard God's call to leave their comfortable life behind and step into the unknowns. I wonder how people who believe in their own abilities and successes would respond to God when he calls them. And I wonder how you will respond to God when you hear God saying, leave everything behind and follow me. When Jesus called his disciples, many of them left everything behind and followed him immediately. Simon and Andrew, they were fishermen. And Jesus called them, come, follow me. And they followed Jesus immediately. But some chose to stay where they were. In Mark 10, there was a rich man who was asked to follow Jesus. Actually, he was invited by Jesus to follow him. But one, under one condition. This rich man had to give up everything he had and give away his wealth to the poor. But he chose not to let go of his wealth. And he chose not to follow Jesus. And the Bible said his excuse was because he was rich. So I wonder how we would respond when we are called by God. Would we leave Haran behind? Haran where Abraham and his family had a very comfortable life. Very secure. What if God calls us to leave our heart behind and move to an unknown place where God is leading us to? When God calls us to leave hatred and grudges behind and forgive others, I'm not encouraging you to leave Morningside Church, okay? I'm not saying it, right? What I'm saying is, what if God is telling us to do something that we don't like? We hesitate to do so. Like I leave hatred and grudges behind and forgive others. I wonder how many of us would do so. This morning, 
there was a young mom with a little baby leaving her car in our church car park. It happens every time we have a special things going on in the school of art, right? And I saw this lady and with a little baby and the, you know, leaving the car behind and walk away. And so I stopped her and I told her to move her car because this was about to be used by church members. I said it because of you, right? And she said, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Then she said, church is supposed to be a nice and kind place. Thank you for laughing with me. <laughs> Especially, I have a little baby. Maybe you don't have a baby. So I replied. I didn't react. I didn't raise my voice at all. My hands were started shaking, though. My in the blood in the rushing through my... Anyway, so, because I was confronted, right? So I replied, yes. We are nice and kind. That's why I'm nicely and kindly asking you to move your car. After that, I was sitting in the office, thinking and asking God, God, should I have let her leave her car here? That at least she would know how nice and kind the church we were. Maybe our church car park is Haran where we need to leave from because we think it is ours. Because we think it is we have a right and we deserve to use it because it is ours. What if our church car park is Haran and God is asking us to leave our Haran behind? Would you keep the door open for everyone to use, including on Sundays? During Lent, let us find out where our Haran is. Could be a place, or could be a situation, or could be a someone that you have in your mind and in your memory, good or bad. Where our Haran is that keep us from following God's call. And during Lent, let us find out how faithful and humble and obedient we are to leave Haran behind and move to where God lead us, even though it may still remain unknown and uncomfortable. We may not know where we are heading, but I know for sure this. As we trust and obey God, once we get there, we will know how God fulfills His promises. So this morning, I'd like to suggest to keep our car park open, <laughs> including Sundays, for people to use. And let's see how God bless all of us and how God fulfills His promise right before our eyes. Amen. Now let us sing our closing hymn, And Can It Be That I Should Gain? Now let us sing together. And can it be
Matthew's gospel confirms that you are the light of the world. So let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is with you always. And as you do so, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Now let us bless each other. God bless you.